Don't drop that there! Aww. Hi everyone, I'm Luke Hector and you're watching The Broken Meeple. This is a YouTube channel about board games where I give reviews, top tens and my honest opinions, regardless of the consequences. We'll get on with the show in just a minute, but first a quick word from my sponsor. We all work hard, we all have busy lives, therefore learning and playing new games can sometimes be taxing on the mind, especially after a long day at work. I recommend a good cup of coffee as a pick-me-up. So why not check out some varieties from Meeple Coffee? Ethically sourced, sustainable, speciality coffee created by board gamers for board gamers. Five different varieties, including one decaf, and all with pairings for board games to brew them with. I'm currently playing through the Lost Ruins of Arnak solo campaign with a little bit of Explorer's Treasure in my cup. Why not consider a subscription? Get them delivered to your door, never forget to top up your reserves, and get 10% off the cost. So head to Meeple Coffee to grab a beverage that complements your tabletop gaming passion. And don't end up like this guy. Wow, do I really suck my thumb when I sleep? Get on with it. Got a smaller game for you today, everyone. Archaeologic, which granted, trying to spell this one online was causing me a bit of difficulty, not to mention just pronouncing the thing whenever I was trying to recall what title it was. You know, there must have been some easier title we could have used for this, especially when this is a deduction game with not exactly much theme going for it, but I don't know, I digress. But like I said, this is a new deduction game from Ludonaut Games, and Ludonaut sits on my shelf with uh, Precognition and Living Forest for the most part, but they've done quite a few other nice little interesting games as well. I love deduction games. I really do. Deduction games are one of my favourite themes. I don't love them all. I mean, something like Sleuth is maybe a little bit too long, a bit too much, and also the fact that it can, br I mean, the problem with deduction games is that you can break it if somebody gives the wrong information. Dear God, what is it like in your funny little brains? It must be so boring. But when you have that happen in a two-hour sleuth game or something, you know, you kind of want to rip the guy's throat out. That was pretty brutal even by my standards. No backsies. But the idea with most deduction games is they're usually short enough, quick enough. I mean, you've got things from uh, Sherlock 13, nice little filler deduction game, all the way up to, uh, well, a couple that I'll mention in my uh, segment coming up. So naturally, if you're going to come out with a deduction game, I'm going to give it a look-see. I already have several on my shelf. So can this one stand out and give me something new or is it just basically rinse and repeating the same formula? Well, let's get into it. The premise of Archaeologic is very simple. Find out the solution before everybody else does. But what you're trying to do is you have a little grid in front of you, a 5x5 five five grid, 8E, 1 to 5, and you have six building pieces, or six tiles basically, polyomino Tetris tiles that you've seen before, with little symbols on them with different colours. So yes, this is colourblind friendly. But you know, what you're trying to do is to figure out what orientation all the pieces fit on your board. So they all fit in some way that allows you to essentially have three empty spaces Bases and the rest are filled in. I have just conveniently managed to do that with this orientation. But the only way to find out is by using this weird contraption wheel thing. So what happens is that you essentially, first you'll get some starting clues based on you know how hard you want the game to be, three, four, or five. But during the game, you have a timer track. And yeah, this is gonna be familiar to some of you folk where all of you have a counter on the edge and you will ask a specific question which requires a certain amount of time, one, two, or three. These questions range from asking what type of, you know, how many different tiles are on this row, how, uh, what symbols are on this row, how many empty spaces are on this row, uh, you know, for this particular tile, what instances are on this row, you know, that kind of thing. But what you do to check is you put this thing behind your device so that the axis you're looking at is in the bottom circle and then you twist the little wheel at the top to essentially like look at the question you're on about so only i'm looking at the square one put access five down there and then you look through three holes and you see for uh, dots which are basically blanks red herrings but you're looking for the answers so the answers will tell you what symbols or maybe it'll give you a number like how many empty spaces are on axis five and you'll do this and you'll turn it around and it'll say two so all right i know two empty spaces are on axis five you'll take notes and throughout all these questions eventually you will decide you know what i can figure it out now you'll come up with the solution 
solution, you get it wrong, you're out, you get it right, you win. It's simply a race game, there are no victory points. The little trick though is that the timer marker dictates turn order. So if you are at the back, you will go next. So the more questions you ask that require more time, the less questions you're going to ask overall because other players might ask quicker time questions, meaning that they get to have more turns or act before you at a critical stage. That's easy! So that all sounds pretty straightforward and deduction game fans of you out there are going to think of one game in particular that this is definitely reminding you of and I thought the same thing as soon as I heard the premise. Search for Planet X. This is a deduction game I think from Renegade Games and this basically had a similar function with a timer track and you can insert search for lost species or whatever the sequel it's the same game for, for the most part but essentially what that had was that in Search for Planet X you were trying to find out right I need to find out where these particular space phenomena are in these various sectors but you had a timer track and you had the questions you could ask and certain questions took more time and the turn order was important and there was a few other rules on top this is definitely a simpler version kind of like a condensed um, a condensed deduction game from that because literally, literally all it's really borrowing is the fact that A, it's a deduction game B, it's a race and C, you have the timer track all the stuff that Search for Planet X had about like, you know, finding theories and doing all the other little bits and researches and stuff that's not in this game this is straightforward ask a question, check the device, note, get, make your notes, move your timer track, and then keep going until someone finds a solution. So this is definitely a simpler rule set, but still, you know, familiar territory. This game is very simple to learn, like really, really simple. This is the rule book and most of it is pictorial examples. There's a few pages to explain the rules, a couple for contents, and then the rest of it is either solutions or explaining solo mode and expert mode and the web app, which I know some of you anti-app haters are gonna be like, oh my God, no, oh, I don't wanna use an app, it'll go obsolete. And I'm the bad guy? Whatever. Firstly, I like apps and games, and B, this doesn't need an app, all right? Unlike something like Search for Planet, X. This just has a web app to help you with starting clues and checking the solution. That's it. It's a nice little assistant to speed the game up a little bit and to make that aspect easier than having to check it manually. But other than that, you play the entire game without the use of an app. It's all done via this little device. So don't worry, the app's not going to take away your game. Put the dice away before I take them away. The deduction puzzle is a very interesting one and different because a lot of these other deduction games usually want to you to find like where do certain things appear in certain other bits or like, you know, Cluedo style ones like Awkward Guess want you to find out who did this with what and everything. They're a bit more specific. Search for Planet X had 12, maybe 18 sectors and you had to find out which bits were in what sectors. It's one that's kind of like the first deduction game that I'm aware of that, or certainly one of the more recent ones, that does spatial awareness instead. I mean, yes, we've seen polyomino tiles a million times, but to use them here in such a way that you've got to think, right, okay, so well, that could be orientated that way, but then that symbol could also be there, and if it's there, well, can that piece fit there? It's essentially building a jigsaw puzzle when you don't know necessarily, you know, where the pieces are meant to go in the first place, you know, like in terms of like symbology in that. It, I suppose a better analogy would be a jigsaw puzzle where you don't actually see the cover of the jigsaw puzzle ahead of time. And that makes more sense. And it's a cool puzzle and there's multiple difficulties that you can use. And I've heard some people complain that they think the game is too easy. What is your favorite color? Blue. No. <laughs> I think those people got lucky on some of their occasions because some of these tiles can be a little bit swingy by the starting clues. You can have three, four or five starting clues and obviously that's basically hard, medium or easy. Five starting clues will not take you very long at all to figure it out, whereas four and three is a bit different. But the trap symbols that are on these, which are basically the pink and orange icons, having those as starting clues is huge. Like, it tells you quite a bit about where the pieces will go. You get blue symbols as your starting clues, that's not going to tell you much at all. And it is just dependent on the sheet. So you're probably thinking, well, okay, well, there better be a good amount of variety in the game. Oh, yes, there's a lot of variety in this game. Um, 
Yeah, would you like, and you know, I haven't punched every single one of them out, but uh, yeah, there's a good amount there to keep you entertained for a decent while. And it's not like you're gonna memorize all these positions. And even better, the web app even has daily challenge puzzles that you can do, which give you different starting clues. So normally you get told where three symbols are on your board. You, this one, you might get a starting clue which tells you this piece is like this in relevance to this piece. You know, a different interesting starting clue. And they have these daily ones on the app. So you've almost got unlimited variety in the game. I mean, even by the time you exhaust all those sheets, which is not going to happen for a while, you've then got the app to provide you with more puzzles and that to do. And it's not going to take you very long at all. I mean, this is a super fast game. 40 minutes, it says on the timer. And honestly, that's with the maximum number of players. This can go from one to four and four players will probably take you about 40, 45 minutes. But you play this with less players, you'll be done pretty, pretty fast. I mean, you play this solo, you could be done with the game in like 15 minutes, you know, 20 minutes tops. It's a super fast deduction game compared to a lot of the others. And I guarantee you, Search for Planet X and Species and Awkward Guests particularly, those games take a lot longer to finish compared to this one. It's, you know, not the smallest box in the world, but it's definitely one of the zippier deduction games that you can get. The timer track we've seen in Search for Planet X, but it's a cool mechanic. I like this idea because you don't typically have a lot of interaction in most deduction games. Some you do, or good guess, for example, you have a decent amount of interaction, but like something like Search for Planet X, you never really had that much interaction. I mean, you kind of kept an eye on what other people's clues were, but there was so much you had to figure out. You know, that, that, you know there was only so much you could do with that information, and mainly it was just racing for the theories. Deduction games are typically your own puzzle. I mean, a uh, Turing machine, pretty much a solo race, and that's it. You know, whatever the others are thinking, who cares? This one, though, with the timer track, and much like Search for Planet X, introduces a little bit of interaction. Not loads, but a little bit. Here, it's a bit easier to gauge what people are getting from the clues they're asking, because you've only got to figure out six pieces. It's not like you've got to work out 12, 18 sectors with like seven different types of things that could appear in them with different logic rules. Here, it's here's six pieces, they're on this board somehow, fit them on there. It, there's less information that you've got to juggle in your head based on what other players are thinking. But the main reason for the interaction is the timer track itself. Who goes next? That is paramount importance. In fact, the first game I played at Essen when I was demoing this, I won the game purely because I was tactical with a timer question that I asked in the turn where I needed to confirm one last thing and I had to make it a question that meant that I went first next turn as well because I knew that the others had already kind of figured it out and it's like well I need to make sure and I figured it out now and go next so I'll ask this question confirm my findings yes right that's it I'm at the back I go next I do the solution I win it can be down to the wire in that regard and you know, if you just ask nothing but the most high time questions ever, you're not going to get enough turns in the game and somebody else will beat you to the punch by asking less, you know, shorter time questions. So you got to do an interesting little balance of what types of questions you're asking and be mindful of what the other players are doing. Now that's if you play, you know, a two, three, four player game and, uh, you know, have that respect. You can also play the solo and honestly, I'll probably play it solo more often, mainly just because of how super fast it is and the fact that, you know, you know, the timer track is the main reason you could play it multiplayer. But in a solo mode, the main thing that you're doing is simply working out the puzzle, except you move as much as you need to on the timer track and you compare it on the web app to see, well, did you do it by apprentice level or season level or master level, depending on how many turns it took you. So there is an element of kind of beat your own score, beat your own rating. But there is also a tactical element where you have to be mindful of where the access is because on this board, you can only ask questions about the axis that this little marker is going clockwise. And in a multiplayer game, there's a bit more control over it. But in a solo game, you have to, you can only move it based on what trap icons you see as part of your questions. So you might find that you're stuck on a particular axis for a while and you need to ask specific questions to try and shift it off. So there's a little bit of a difference there. But for the most part, multiplayer and solitaire play about the same. But for the game this short, I'm happy to play it with any player count, honestly. Maybe four is going a little bit far like all the time but and certainly analysis paralysis players don't put anywhere near this game but then to be honest you don't do that with any deduction game but one two three or four i've enjoyed my time with this it scales fine 
Now this is kind of a good and a bad in a sense, even though it's in the bad things. Production quality is pretty cheap here. I mean, the most thick, the, the thickest thing here, like the most impressive thing is this device thing itself, which is fine. This is the thing you're gonna be using all the time. But you know, the, the sheets themselves are, you know, little flimsy paper. The tiles are nothing to speak of. I mean, it's the colorblind friendly. There's no real artwork anywhere. You know, this board is, a tiny bit warped, but nothing too mad. It's only a timer track, it's not a big deal. The main thing that certainly does feel cheap are these player screens. You get two of them, effectively. One has like the reference aid for the turns on it, and the other one is just a Bogo standard reference screen, I think with player colors on it. And you're supposed to effectively like put these down to hide your, like, your board and your notes, and they're simply not really big enough. You know, I mean, they kind of work, but if you've got somebody tall sitting at the table and it's a small table, I mean, they could pretty much see over your screen without too much trouble. It's definitely something that you have to be pretty condensed down. Like you've got to really have your board here with your tiles and your note taking, you know, you gotta keep things quite close to your chest in order for these to work. But I don't know why we couldn't have just had bigger screens. Why has it got to be done in two halves with two titchy screens when you could have just had one big screen for everybody? That probably would have worked a little bit better. Or, you know, maybe go the whole hog with the app and have it so that you press it on the app and then I suppose it would just, I suppose why would you need the physical pieces at that point? But you get what I'm saying. They're, they feel a little bit on the cheap side. But the good side is that it feels cheap because it is cheap. This is stupidly cheap. <laughs> I mean, on Kienda it sells for about 22 pound. It's, it's in the early 20s for how much this game costs. That's pretty low compared to a lot of stuff out these days, okay? Everybody's content to play 75, 80 pound for something like Age of Innovation, Path of Civilization, or Upper Area, the Stonemaier game, you know, with these. You know, everyone's, I mean, people were content to pay 90 euro for that game at Essen. I swear you need your head examined if you pay 90 euro for a game like that. Yes, the number I was thinking of was the letter M. But here, it's like 22 pound, barely 25 euro tops. And chances are you might even be able to get it for Christmas slightly cheaper than that. You know, you're talking a 20 pound game. So yes, it's got cheap components, but honestly, do you need to have fancy components for a deduction game? It's about the puzzle. It's not about how good your board is or how good your cards are. It's functional, it does what it needs to do and doesn't you know, kill you, doesn't rip a hole in your wallet. What more do you want? Is bread free? Yeah. We'll split an order. Now I'm gonna reiterate this a little bit that like I mentioned earlier. The difficulty curves in this are a little bit squiffy at times. Like some of these sheets are just gonna be easier than others based on the idea that it's very hard to balance this sort of game mathematically. Now, most of the problems with this are on the beginner mode. So the normal mode where you play with three, four or five starting clues that tell you where symbols are and you go with that. I guarantee you, if you then switch it up to expert mode where you get the more interesting clue, you're not gonna get that problem anymore. <laughs> you know, They're gonna give you clues that don't tell you exactly where certain symbols are on the board and so there's definitely more to think about at that time but the normal mode while you're trying to get someone used to the game you may just get a few games that are a little bit like hmm that was a bit fast we figured it out in like three or four moves you know that didn't take long at all it can happen especially if you have a lot of starting clues but then there's even times where one sheet might give you a lot of the orange symbol placements with free starting clues i mean knowing where the orange symbols are is such like huge information that you know it makes that tile inherently easier anyway it's gonna happen it's a nitpick but you know be aware so overall archaeologic is Another solid deduction game. It's not going to blow the doors off. This isn't one that's like, uh, I highly recommend that this is like the best deduction game out there. I mean, I would probably still prefer to play something like Search for Planet X with the extra bits it adds. I love Awkward Guess, you know, the player interaction in that makes me want to play that a bit more. But this game has a lot of good stuff going for it. And a lot of it comes down to just how cheap and simple and quick it is. A lot of deduction games can warrant a lot of time or they can warrant you know, a decent amount of cost or quite a lot of things to consider. I mean, you're not playing awkward guess quick or teaching it that quick, to be honest. Search for Planet X requires everybody to get the app and program it in. Some people just don't like using an app or can't be bothered to teach everybody to download an app and then go down, you know, go get other things. There are things that hinder those games for multiplayer groups. I don't mind it honestly, but different strokes, different folks. This one has the advantage of just being streamlined, quick, simple, cheap. 
It's not trying to do anything more than what it sets out to do. It's a spatial awareness deduction puzzle where you don't need an app in order to make it work. You don't need to spend £50 on the actual game and it will still give you a decent amount of variety and with the use of your phone and a little bit of the internet, you'll still be able to actually get a bit more variety out of the game anyway. Do I wish that maybe it was a little bit less fiddly to use this thing? Yeah, that's definitely a thing. You know, the difficulty curve is definitely something to be aware of, although honestly, once you get started doing expert mode on this game, most of those problems go away. And yes, some of the components like the screens are a bit on the cheap side, that can get a little bit annoying, but they're mostly nitpicks. But the game is still just an impressive deduction game. You know, it's not one that I'm gonna, you know, pull out and play all the time, but you know, if I want to pull out a solid deduction game that's super fast, particularly for solo play, this is definitely one that I would look at because it will do exactly what I need it to do. Give me something to test my brain for a very short period of time. And not a lot of games can do it as fast as this one does. I give it overall, I, I, I was contemplating a seven, but I think I'm gonna be, a, I don't know if this is generous or not, but I think I'm going in for an eight because it is a great deduction game and I do really enjoy playing it. And, you know, it doesn't blow the doors off for uh, you know, innovation and stuff like that. So maybe we're not talking 9, 10 out of 10s territories here. But the timer track is still fun to use in multiplayer. But, and, you know, the deduction puzzle is still good, interesting, and thinky. But the reason I'm going to an 8 rather than a 7 is because i got to give it props for just how cheap and good value it is. You've got pretty much unlimited variety if you use the web app daily challenges to get you by. But then you've also got a decent amount in the box already, and the game is barely costing you just over £20, which is very cheap. For a game these days. If you've got somebody who likes figuring out puzzles, who particularly is into spatial awareness type puzzles, bear in mind most deduction games don't deal with spatial awareness other than saying, oh this has to be next to this, you know, that kind of thing, much like Planet X was. But something like this, arranging the, you know, the jigsaw puzzle and that, if you've got somebody who's a fan of those sort of puzzles, this is going to be a surefire hit for them. It's an 8 out of 10, I'm going to hang on to it and I'm going to play this whenever I feel like a nice quick puzzle. So that's it for me on this episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, then please thumb it up on YouTube and thumb it up on Board Game Geek. The link will be in the description. Please get the thumbs on there and let's put it in the hot review section where it will hopefully stay. Check out the other reviews I've been doing lately. Nucleum and, uh, you know, Kutna Horror and Path to Civilization. And, you know, there's going to be more besides soon called Blimey. It's going to take a while, but yeah, hopefully you're enjoying these videos. So take care and remember, regardless of whether you're against the app or not, it's still... Only a game, so take care and bye for now.